Hello everyone, welcome to Media Nama. On November 10, India's Ministry of Information and Broadcasting released a draft of the Broadcasting Services Regulation Bill 2023. This bill is set to replace the Cable Television Networks Act of 1995, which has been in place for the past three decades. With the new bill, the government aims to bring over the top services, that is uh, OTT platforms like Disney Plus, Hotstar, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Geo Cinema, etc. Uh, under regulation. These platforms will be required to ensure that their content is certified by a content evaluation committee and will also have to comply with a multi-layered regulatory system. The fact that these services are being included in this, in this bill means that OTT services are being classified as broadcast services. To make sense of what this new classification means for streaming services, we have with us Nikhil Pawa, Media Nama founder and editor. Hi, Nikhil. Uh, so firstly, I would like to know whether it is accurate to classify streaming services as uh, broadcast services. Thanks, Aswati. Look, uh, traditionally, broadcast has been very different from narrowcast or unicast, right? Broadcast is one to many. It is a situation where users have no control over the content that they're receiving and have no indication of what is the kind of content that might be received. So the state likes to step in and to ensure the sanctity, like the the uh, exert some control of the content because they don't want people to be inadvertently uh, subjected to content which is maybe not suitable for them. And so, uh, and because mass communication of certain content can have an impact on society um, and, you know, states are generally moralistic by nature uh, and they try to look at these as mechanisms of narrative control or crowd control. Uh, they don't want large number of people to basically uh, get access to, uh, uh, they want to control what gets communicated to a vast number of people. Now, mm -hmm. in that sense, they've dis uh, if you go back to traditional television, uh, what would happen is that uh, there is a stream of content that is going out. Uh, you have some control in terms of a remote control, but you can't control uh, the your choice of what's being shown on that channel. And so uh, this is basically a form of mass communication. Mm -hmm. In the same way, um, uh, there is some control exerted over public viewing, which is in the presence of many people uh, in case of cinema. Now, online is a one-to-one, -one, which is uh, anything that I'm viewing is being communicated to me uh, individually in my personal capacity. In fact, if you look at it, most uh, content consumption in India happens on personal devices rather than shared screens um, uh, and uh, multiple people watching. And even when they are, it's an individual's device, right? So um, uh, to call uh, this one-to-one -one communication where let's say I might be choosing to watch a particular video uh, or a particular show or a particular movie, uh, is is not broadcast. Uh, mm -hmm. It is unicast. It's one to one. Um, it is data being uh, released from one entity or uh, transferred from one entity to specifically me when I'm asking for that data. That doesn't have so. It's, so to classify that broadcast uh, is a problem, and this is slightly controversial uh, because there are issues. Uh, if you go back to the Kamlesh Vaswani case in the mm. Supreme Court of India, uh, when uh, Kamlesh Vaswani had gone to court to seek a ban in the Supreme Court uh, on pornography online. Uh, and I was in, in the Supreme Court, it was in court number one, and the then Attorney General of India, Mukul Rodhki, went uh, and said, uh, you know, uh, to the, said to the court that the government doesn't want to do model policing. Uh, it understands that the content that is being consumed online, including pornography, is being consumed in a person's bedroom. And mm -hmm. uh, they don't want to basically control what someone does in the privacy of their bedrooms. Um, so, you know, in that sense, uh, the content that they're viewing in the privacy of their rooms, in the privacy of their personal devices is not something that the state wants to regulate. Right. Now, that's pornography, right? But if you think about it conceptually, um, the same applies to online streaming. If anything, it is less uh, sort of uh, 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 an overtly moralistic person would be more all right with 
uh, online streaming uh, services like uh, Hotstar, uh, Netflix, and Amazon Prime, uh, as opposed to porn. And yet there is a regulation for restricting uh, or controlling access to uh, streaming services and erroneously equating them to uh, broadcast. Now, will these companies do anything about it? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think uh, when you look at the way uh, streaming services have failed to challenge the IT rules, which regulate them uh, without legal backing, um, and the way they've allowed the formation of a multi-tier system without going to court to challenge it. And a lot of that came on the back of um, the Tandav case uh, in the Allahabad High Court where um, you know there was uh, the risk of a non-bailable arrest warrant against the uh, head of content uh, for Amazon Prime. Essentially, streaming services decided they don't want to mess with the government. And so it's unlikely that they will challenge this idea uh, and say that they are not broadcast, even though they are actually not broadcast. Right. Uh, there's one more aspect uh, under the same uh, discussion. So like while some of the streaming services uh, uh, like Disney Plus Hotstar, they relay television channels also and others only offer on on demand content. So this distinction between on-demand content and uh, uh, broadcasting live telecast, do you think they should be treated differently, like these two um, aspects? Yeah, look, that's something which actually was a bone of contention between Reliance Geo and Bharti Airtel as well, where uh, Reliance Geo was asking, well, Airtel was asking that Reliance Geo uh, is actually bypassing regular broadcast regulations and and essentially broadcasting uh, offline, like live stream content online um, or something on those lines. Uh, I think uh, th there is um, most internet content is on demand. Mm -hmm. How do you create a distinction between a video that you decide to play on YouTube versus a show that you decide to play on a Netflix or an Amazon or a Hotstar or a Geo Cinema? Uh, there is none, right? Uh, one is just user-generated content uh, platform. The other is commissioned, uh, licensed content platform. Why should the treatment of a YouTube be different when that content is on demand versus uh, mm -hmm. a, a Netflix when that content is on demand? So the freedom of speech considerations apply to both. Um, the uh, creation of any censorship regime or treating them similar to broadcast, which is public distribution, uh, none of those should actually apply, but this bill looks like it will create that regime. Um, and it's not on-demand content, frankly. Um, in the same vein, uh, if let's say it's like, uh, if I, if I uh, let's take Paradise Radio, right? Online radio streaming. Mm. Should that also be covered under a radio license and treated the same as radio? It's just a series of songs that someone is putting together that some, that, people can choose to listen to. Uh, you have to so just like uh, broadcast video services are being treated like uh, uh, even if there's live streaming, the same content that they're, they're showing on television, mm -hmm. the fact is the medium is different. Uh, the fact is that there should be no, uh, it is in the privacy of someone's bedroom. So the same rules as television and broadcast can't apply to online, frankly. Uh, I think it's flawed by design, but it's also a situation where the government doesn't know what to do differently because there's also mm -hmm. the stakeholders who are demanding regulation of streaming content. Uh, they were demanding creation of these IT rules and the multi-tier structure for censorship right. because there were people who were going to court on a regular basis against many of these services uh, about some sensibility that may have been hurt because of, a, uh, uh, you know, uh, because of the content on a show. There are now busybodies filing cases hmm. uh, related to content in, in this country. And so, uh, you know, the streaming services also were getting tired of going to court to protect their content uh, as such. Yeah. So I think they've largely been battered into submission and they're likely to give in here. Hmm. 
So uh, when it comes to regulation, about a month ago, the Telecom Dispute Settlement and Appellate Tribunal, TDSAT, ruled that an OTT platform does not come under the jurisdiction of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India or TRI. So could you talk to us about the bill and the, uh, I mean, the inclusion of uh, streaming services under uh, the broadcasting bill in the context of this judgment? Correct. So, so the TDSAT judgment makes it pretty much the same arguments that, that we're making right in terms of it's the fact that it's full content the fact that it mm -hmm. is uh, users choose to watch it um and that it's not a tele it's not uh, a telecom service delivered over spectrum uh mm -hmm. you know it is delivered over the internet users are not, are going and accessing this content and choosing to view it uh the same argument applies so the td sat is absolutely correct it's not the same as television the trai does and that's also a, a questionable position uh, in law. The, TD, the TRAI does regulate the broadcast industry. I know mm. the broadcast industry doesn't like it. And maybe the TD, TRAI is not the right regulator to, to regulate broadcast. And it's wasting a lot of public money going to court, constantly battling broadcasters. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, do we need a broadcast regulator in this country? Um, I'm not sure why we would need a broadcast regulator. I'm not sure why we would need an online services regulator. Something right. that is illegal mm -hmm. is illegal. Something that is... Uh, uh, and so we should regulate that. What you're doing is you're suppressing freedom of speech further by creating a regulatory structure or an approvals body and mm -hmm. uh, uh, forcing entities to show only censored content uh, when it mm -hmm. is for private viewing. Right. Thank you so much, Nikhil. For our readers, if you're curious about the developments in the OTT regulation space and the story, do check out our detailed coverage of the bill on Media Nama's website and also follow for regular tech policy updates. Thank you.